back at you here at KMJ. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. You know, we talk about DeSantis and Newsom getting together, and many people are asking, is this the debate that we should be having? I said yesterday, wouldn't it be funny? Because I'm convinced, for whatever reasons, in my gut, that when we get to the finish line, the two you know people standing there looking at each other are not going to be Trump or Biden. That's just me. You know, and what if it turned out to be these guys? Maybe then that's the debate we should be having. But let's find out for somebody, you know, who knows this stuff and does it for a living. That's the uh, chairman of the Republican Party in the state of California. He's been on the program many times. Jessica Milan patterson Chairwoman Patterson, welcome back to KMJ. Great to have you. It's always great to be with you, Ray. Thanks for having me. So I say Newsom, DeSantis, debate, why? And you respond, what to the why? (laughs) I don't disagree with you. I do think that uh, Gavin Newsom is going to be at the top of the ticket for the Democrats. I think we're going to see, you know, a very polite, a very respectful bow out of Biden. Um, I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but I think that we're going to see someone other than Joe Biden at the top of the ticket for Democrats. Mm -hmm. Uh, On the Republican side, I think it's still anybody's game. I don't know that we can uh, first foresee who exactly it's going to be. I've seen with the way that we have our primary set up, um, it matters what happens in Iowa. It matters what happens in New Hampshire. And this time around, I think California is actually going to play a really big role in this because of our early primary. It looks like it, yeah. So what happens in these next few races, um, these early states, is going to dictate Uh, where we end up. But I don't disagree that Gavin Newsom will very likely be at the top of the ticket because the only person with a worse approval rating on the Democrat side than Joe Biden is Kamala Harris. So it sure as heck ain't going to be her. And we've seen uh, President Biden. He is not up to the task outside of all of his failures on the policy side. We see that he is not physically up to the task of being president of the United States. Well, okay. With that in mind, um, Gavin Newsom would be entering at a time when his ratings are abominably low for Gavin Newsom in the state of California. And that seems to be translating across the country, or so I'm told. So this debate between Newsom and DeSantis may expose some of the the weaknesses of our governor, hopefully, to a national audience. Do you think that might be possible with the two of them getting together? Yeah, and I think what Governor DeSantis needs to do is stick with the facts, right? We know that Gavin Newsom is an absolute smooth talker. He is a shiny tide salesman trying to get you to buy that lemon. And that's what California has become under his leadership. When you look at every single one of the markers that would state, and the number one marker is, are people coming to your state or are people leaving your state? And you know, uh, we lost 800,000 people in 2022 alone. In the reapportionment in 2020, we lost a congressional district for the first time. Places yeah. like Texas and Florida yeah. picked one up. So it's very clear that he is failing on the side of the facts. But he is a very, very smooth talker. And that's why he wants to be on the same stage as someone like Governor DeSantis, and he is going to try and distract people, and he's going to use words like fifth largest economy. But the fact of the matter is people are leaving California, not because the views of the oceans or beautiful mountains or valleys have changed. They're leaving because of the policies that Democrats have put forth over the last decade and a half that have made it unlivable, whether it's only 15 percent of Californians being able to afford to buy a home whether it is our education system that was kept closed longer than any other state in the nation, so much so that our kids, less than 50% are reading at grade level, whether it's the rising crime or the homeless crisis that he told us he'd get rid of 20 years ago in San Francisco. All of these failures of California Democrats are driving Californians out, but he's going to be a very smooth talker. And I think uh, Governor DeSantis, if he keeps talking about the facts, he wins this. Okay, and that would be of some national significance then, possibly, in exposing, you know, some of the the weak links in the chain of, of Gavin Newsom. I mean, he's a he's a metrosexual smooth talker, you know, BS expert. We know all about it. Insiders, friendlies, tell me up in Sacramento that if you you go after his his perfect hair or his perfect teeth, he he comes unglued. 
He's got an Achilles heel, and the Achilles heel is him. Now, I don't know if DeSantis is going to choose, you know, personal targets like that, but I do agree with you. If he sticks to the record of his state and ours, he walks away the big winner on this. It's really no contest, Ray. When you look at what's happened in Florida, you know, just a few weeks ago, we had the national FBI report come out on crime. Crime is going down. Uh, violent crimes are going down across our nation. In California, they were up 13 percent. In Florida, they were down 31 percent. It is very clear when you put the two states side by side who is succeeding and who is failing. And I don't think there's anyone in the country looking at California and saying that's what we should be doing. No, and for you know the longest time, even though he's dropped it from his his long term rap, Gavin Newsom was saying that if he were the president, he would want to take the California rule, the California life, the 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 whole thing of California and appropriately launch it throughout the United States of America. And, you know, you think people are leaving the state of California. If that happened, they'd be leaving the United States of America in droves and going to England or wherever. Um, I think one of the things that that really is going to be a big issue here is border policy. <clears throat> Gavin Newsom has written the book on inviting illegal aliens from every country in the world to come to the, you know, the great state of California, right? Gavin Newsom, excuse me, Ron DeSantis signed some of the, the toughest anti-illegal alien law in the United States of America for his state of Florida. And I would say it's worked out really well. The other is going to be COVID policy. Um, you know, Gavin Newsom successfully shut the world's fifth largest economy down. And, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis kept his up and running. And we know the lesson there, don't we? Absolutely. You know, the 20,000 businesses that closed permanently uh, because of his draconian measures that he took, uh, all of the children across our state that were kept home from school, and then once they were allowed to go back to school were wearing masks that um, Im- impeded their speech and certainly impeded their learning over those, you know, two and a half years uh, that we were going through this ordeal, all of those things. But you, you bring up a good point on the border situation. Gavin Newsom has made it so bad here in California that every state in the country is now a border state, right? When you see places like New York dealing with the same issues that Californians are, um, when we're looking at a crisis on the fentanyl side of things coming over our border, 110 Californians every single week are dying. That's like a plane falling out of the sky every single week. Can you imagine if that happened? they would be shutting down the planes. We should be securing our border. And the fact that this governor chooses not to has affected the rest of the country. And I think Americans will. That's why it's so important for it to be on the national stage. Well, we're going to get a chance to see it and hear it. You'll hear it on KMJ. We're going to carry it live 6 o'clock on the 30th. Uh, it, it's it's going to be interesting for sure. Uh, Chairwoman Patterson, thank you so much for joining us. I'm in total agreement with everything you've said about this one. And I think there's a national lesson that could be learned from this debate that might suit us well in 2024 if indeed Newsom does wind up on top of the Democratic ticket. And I think there's a big possibility of that happening. You have a good Christmas and we'll talk soon.